Guys, Kenyans, they are holding their elections in August. It is very, very close, much earlier than our own election, and they don't have as much drama as we do in Nigeria. Well, actually, um, that's not true. They also have their own drama. <laughs> Kenya is getting ready for one of its most contested presidential elections in recent years. The country's deputy president, who fell out with the current leader Uhuru Kenyatta, is going up against a long-standing politician, Raila Odinga. Kenyans are going through a difficult time at the moment, cost of living crisis. They also want corruption to be tackled. First of all, do you know that the vice president, that is William Ruto, is one of the most popular candidates running? I'm like, what? Just like our own vice president. But you know, the funny thing is, the president, that is Uhuru Kenyatta, is not supporting his vice president. He has endorsed the other popular candidate who used to be his own opponent in the previous elections. I'm talking about my Kenyan father. That is Rila Odinga. <laughs> I have a lot of fathers in Kenya as well. First of all, um, let me ask, is it okay for a president to like openly endorse a successor in a democratic country, you know, like uh, the Kenyan president is doing? Is that, is that okay? I don't know. I'm just... What is this? Uh, why now? Why, why do you have to put our business out there? We are talking about Kenya. Take it down, take it down, take it down. Ahem. As I was saying, the president is supporting Odinga publicly, you know, and going by the comments on social media, on YouTube, by many Kenyans, it looks like many Kenyans are happy about this because guess what? Both of them, the president and Odinga, they have history. They go way back. The rivalry between President Uhuru Kenyatta and opposition leader Raila Odinga echoes that of their fathers, the country's first president and vice president following independence in 1963. As in, so Kenyatta's father was the very first president of Kenya after independence and Odinga's father was the very first Kenyan vice president. But um, Kenyatta's father, the first president, fired Odinga's father one year into office. And so since then, the two families families, uh, they've been in a generational fight, kind of. Each son trying to prove his own father's ideology is better. The two men disagreed on general ideology and on resource and land allocation issues, much like their sons. Also, Odinga's people feel marginalized in Kenya because no one from his side of the country has ever been president. Since independence, no one from outside Kenya's Rift Valley or central provinces has ruled the country feeding a sense of marginalization in the West, Odinga's home region. Needless to say, Odinga has spent all his life trying to be president. Well, not all his life. He used to be prime minister, by the way. But now he has contested four different times with no luck. In fact, in 2017, when they had the post-election violence in Kenya that killed about 30 people, the election was between the two of them, you know, uh, before Odinga stepped down. And then in 2018, don't forget that I told you guys how Odinga declared him himself as the president of the people and he had his own inauguration ceremony. <laughs> that was when he became my Kenyan father. So the two of them have been in a power tussle for a long time. But now they made peace and the president is endorsing him publicly as his successor. So that is why a lot of Kenyans are happy about this because they want peace. And this means that this is the fifth time that Odinga is running and people are now saying, let's give him a chance. Although we did that in Nigeria and it backfired. <laughs> Why he ran several times before becoming president, people were like, ah, let's give him a chance. But guess what? He messed us up. I'm not comparing Odinga to Buhari, by the way. I'm just saying that we've also had a similar situation that somebody ran several times. And then one of the ways Odinga is winning people's hearts is by having a female running mate. We were like, what? And not just any woman, no. Her name is Martha Karua, former justice minister. And this is making her the first ever female candidate on the major presidential ticket. What? Kenyans are describing this woman as a no-nonsense woman. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm excited. <laughs> Anyways, next time, let's talk about the vice president. As in, there's a lot of drama with him as well. Depending on who you ask in Kenya, some people describe the vice president, William Rito, as a very brilliant politician. And then some people say that he's the most corrupt politician. Okay. <laughs> That some people are comparing him to Atiku Abubakar that we have in Nigeria. I'm not saying that Atiku is corrupt. I'm just, okay, 
Okay, I'm just trying, okay, you get it. So we'll talk about that next time as we keep watching on the drama that is unfolding in Kenya on our Plasma TVs. Kenyans, who are you voting for and why? <laughs> so let me know what you guys think about this story. We'll keep you posted as Kenyans get ready to go to the polls. You guys now don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real.